presents USA's Tuesday Night Fights. Scheduled for 10 rounds, the legendary Roberto Duran versus Ray Demange. along with the champ, Sean O'Grady, at ringside here in Miami. Ray Demange is already in the ring. And Roberto Duran about to make his entrance in front of many friends here in Miami. Duran now resides in Miami, and he is making Demange wait in the ring. Uh, this is a tactic in a world championship fight, which this is not. Yeah, but one of the liberties that you have as a big-name fighter is your opponent has to go in the ring first. You sit in the back, rest, relax, get warmed up for the fight while your opponent stands in front of the crowd and sweats. Right now, Ray Demange is sweating. Especially putting a fighter like Ray Demange, who's uh, very big on the Midwestern circuit, let him stay in the ring and wait. And now, Roberto Duran making his entrance to the legions of fans here in Miami. Working his way through the crowd on the ring walk. The legendary Hands of Stone, the shoeshine boy from the slums of Panama who became a four-time world champion. But it has been six years since he has worn a world title belt. And now, at the age of 44, he continues in the ring into his 29th year of professional fighting. No more titles, though, appear to be in sight but now one more carrot dangles in front of Roberto to keep him going. At ringside tonight is Hector Camacho. And the talk is of a Duran and Macho Man meeting in the ring in May. Ya le dije a Macho que me vaya a ver, porque las clases son para que le voy a meter que va a pelear conmigo. A él le voy a dar mucho mejor. I'm telling you, Hector, come watch this fight tonight. Because the beating I give this fighter, I'm going to give you a better beating. You could run, but you can't hide. And whenever you stop and fight me, I'm going to knock you out. Well, he has fought always better with anger. Tonight, his anger is fueled by a match, a super fight with Hector Camacho. Tonight, he takes a fight uh, looking for a tune-up for Camacho in May, and he'll take on a feisty Nebraska fighter by the name of Ray Demange, who's primarily feasted on the Midwestern circuit, and he thinks that he is catching Duran at the right time and can make a name for himself. Oh, he's a strong kid, but um, he's not going to beat me. He will not beat me. He's very strong, but this year, no more Duran lose. Duran, every day, win, 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 win. Well, he says he's more focused today than he's been in the past, but we'll have to see. So many fighters live in the past like a lot of the top fighters of yesterday coming back today. Well, if he fights Camacho, he's going to probably have to get down to around 160 pounds, and uh, that may be the most difficult part of preparing for Camacho. He's at 168 and a quarter. This is the uh, second highest weight in Duran's career. He was 171 for his last fight in December, and uh, Demange has a quarter uh, pound, a quarter pounder over uh, Roberto Duran. Demange also with the height and the reach advantage. We're in Florida. The rules standing eight count not in effect. Three knockdown rule is you cannot be saved by the bell in any round. And scoring on the 10 point must scoring system. Now sizing up the strengths and the weaknesses of these two fighters. Here's the champ and the black boy. Scribbled out on the boxing blackboard, the strength of Roberto Duran. With all his experience, he's ring-wise. He knows his way around the ropes, and Roberto understands timing. And the stone picks his shot. His weaknesses with age, all fighters lose speed. And remembering earlier days, is Roberto overconfident? While facing Ray Damage, his strength, effective counter-punching. 
He's ambitious and likes to mix it up. Ray's weaknesses, he lacks mobility and power. And without much experience, Dimash could be the perfect opponent for Roberto Duran tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, Michael Acri, Boxing Promotions in association with Jorge Cervantes Promotions and Budweiser, the undisputed King of Beers, presents main event, 10 rounds, super middleweight. Your judges at ringside, assigned by the Florida State Athletic Commission, Mark Streisen of Boca Raton, Florida, and from Miami, Florida, Bob Ballow and Rocky Young. Your referee for this event, from Hialeah, Florida, Bill Connors. Introducing now the principals first in the red corner to my right, wearing the black trunks with burnt orange trim. He weighs 168 and a half pounds yeah. with a professional record of 19 victories, six defeats. He has 11 knockouts. He hails from Omaha, Nebraska. Here is Ray the Rat Demange. Demange. His opponent in the blue corner wearing the white trunks, green accessories and trim. He weighs 168 and a quarter pounds. He has a professional record of 96 victories, 11 defeats. He has 67 knockouts. El Hijo de la República de Panama, now making his home in Miami, Florida, the four-time world champion, Manos de Piedra, Roberto Duran. Duran, 10 rounds, super middleweight. your instructions in the back now. I want a clean fight. Listen to my commands at all times during the course of the round. Any questions over here? I put a gun to it, no? No questions here? Touch gloves. Good luck to both of you. He'll be 45 years old in June, and Sean, after two losses to Vinny Pazienza, Duran now back on national television. He has Camacho at ringside. Isn't Roberto thinking that he has to do something significant tonight to kind of keep this thing going? Oh, sure, and uh, to prove that he wants a fight with Hector Camacho and he wants to get back in, into title contention. I mean, this, well, this is a man, I mean, you look at him. He's a man who has really been mellowed in the years that he has boxed. And uh, Roberto Duran now waiting for the opening bell. And right now, a fight with... Camacho Camacho probably makes the most sense for him. Uh, he is unranked after the losses to Pazienza. He is really out of the mix for any title fight at this point. And uh, he even admitted to us prior to the fight that uh, this is his final year. He has made six comebacks in the course of his 29-year career, but he said this is it, 1996. He would love to win 100 fights, which means four more victories. But quite frankly, if he fights a Camacho and loses that fight, why would he continue after that? That's sure. Good. And he sees it all coming to an end now. Before, he has never talked about retirement. He has never even said that he slowed down at all until now. Now he sees it all happening. And it seems like the older you get, the faster it all happens. Well, Duran now in the late stages in the last uh, couple of years, all of his opponents have been carefully selected, the uh, non-punchers. They all have pretty good records. DeMond's here is 19 and 6. His last couple of fights against the Wilbur Garst, who was 17 and 3. Ronnie Martinez, who was 16 and 0. And Duran uh, knocked both of those fighters out. He has uh, gone to the Midwest circuit whenever he can. Fighters with good records, but no punch. 
putting records together against the poor opposition. DeMond certainly fits into that category, but he comes in a student of the game. He respects the Duran, who he feels is still technically very sound and still has the big right hand, and doesn't feel, although DeMond generally slugs it out, Nebraska and Iowa, he has the record of 19-1 whenever he steps out of the friendly confines. Uh, he is 0-5, so he knows he's not going to slug it out with Duran, even though he's a fighter who likes to mix it up usually. And he's coming here to try to outpoint Roberto. DeMond knows he has to get that jab going. He's got the big nine-inch reach advantage, and there he is trying to get it going. But he has never stepped in off the ring with the likes and the experience of Duran, even Duran at 168 and a quarter and 44 years old. Yeah, he realizes this is a big step up for him, but he says Duran is beatable. They don't think that I'm going to come in and do very well at all. So if I get in there, he was talking about moving early in this fight, in and out. But he is certainly not doing that. Duran has always had problems in the past with the elusive runners. So they did in his corner. And his management trainers did their scouting report in anticipating of a fight, finding a fighter who would match the description that Duran could punch. The uppercut by Devon sneaks in there. Devon's not known especially for his speed or his mobility or his power. So yes, scouted beautifully by the Duran people. The end of round one is scheduled for 10. At Radio Shack, we carry thousands of electronic parts and accessories. Accessories of... Hector Martinez giving instructions to Roberto Duran. This is a fighter you don't have to give many instructions to accept to watch out for the uppercuts. Best punch so, so far from Dimash. Roberto Duran, who turned pro March 8, 1967, at the age of 15, at the weight of 118 pounds. Now, Phantom weight. A few years ago. I think the weight carries more credence than the years. He won his first 29 fights, went into Madison Square Garden against 43-1 world champion Ken Buchanan. Stop Buchanan in a thrilling, stunning victory in the 13th round. And Duran went on to hold that lightweight championship for five and a half years. Would also go on to win the welterweight title, junior middleweight, and the middleweight crown. Middleweight crown against Iran Barkley at the age of 37. At that time, uh, Duran had been written off several different times. 68 and a quarter. That's the way of Roberto on this particular night. Finally won from Barkley. He lost at his next fight to Leonard. That was the last championship he held, WBC. 96 victories, 11 defeats, 67 knockouts for Roberto Duran. 108 fights in 29 years. That actually tells me a little more about Sean O'Grady. Now, Sean, you had 86 fights in nine years in the ring so but it's, it felt like 27 years <laughs> but at that pace if you had fought 29 years you'd have had something around 270 fights wow. and you're a lost wow. career and how did you figure that out al just just came mathematical to just, just came to he picked it out of the sky Picking his shots, Duran. And that's what Roberto Duran is all about right now. Yeah, not many wasted punches. He can't waste at this age, and he knows it. He says his style has changed. He's still rough, tough, and aggressive. His best punch still the left hook. But when he punches now, he has to make every shot count. Oh, downstairs to the body. The fighters like Domenge who have a good defense, keep their hands up around their face. You have to pick around for those spots. Look for those openings. Look at the men carrying the left hand low against a fighter like Duran. That is a dangerous thing to do. Duran already trying to land over the top of that left. Duran who makes his openings. He 
gets inside, he uses the head, uses the shoulders, inside with those short punches, able to turn it over, beats his opponent to the punch. know how much fun playing the guitar can be, but until now... Across the country in a week or two. So go with the flow. Those leotards got a snap. New shows, new episodes. Saturday night, starting at 9. <laughs> Al Albert and the champ, Sean O'Grady, ringside. Roberto Duran in the white trunks. Ray, the rat, the bunch. The rat in the black trunks. His nickname, the rat. His trainer, Mouse Strauss. Says that he picked up that nickname from his dad. He said, whenever he, dad, when I was a little boy, whenever my dad would try to give me a hug, I'd squirrel away. So I got the nickname of the rat. Mouse, his trainer, said, anybody who fights underneath me, and I train, they've got to take a, a nickname of a rodent like the rat. <laughs> Bruce the Mouse Strauss. Now, how would I leave with such great news in the Floyd yes. <laughs> wasn't also okay. particularly happy with that thing. All right, Duran has his man scores. Heavy shot from Duran, but Duran gets in there, scores, and then he moves out. Why is it? Duran said that he was going to move early, but there's a good left hook from him. The match right there for uh, Roberto Duran. Roberto doesn't like to chase down his opponents, especially now. Well, there was a tape sent from the camp of Ray Domenge. The tape of him fighting Heat Todd. And this is the kind of fight that he fought. Now trying to get some more movement. But they wanted for Duran to see something that Domenge would not do. And that was move. So they sent that tape who Duran faced. One minute to go in round number three. Uh, Digging into the body is Roberto Duran. That's experience talking downstairs to the body. Those body shots. Good left hook from Duran. making Duran work here early. Oh yeah, something that he wants to do. He says Duran is going to feel those 44-year-old legs late in this fight. Doing a nice job going down to the body also. I asked Demange before the fight to look forward stepping in against the legend Roberto Duran. He says, I look forward to beating the legend <laughs> Roberto Duran. Look forward stepping out of the ring. <laughs> Interesting to see how Roberto Duran looks tonight is Hector Camacho. Duran Camacho in May. That's what they're talking about. And Hector, Roberto had a couple of choice words for you before tonight's fight. Ya le dije a Camacho que me vaya a ver porque la clase trompa que le voy a meter que va a pelear conmigo. Ahí le voy a dar mucho mejor. Telling you, Hector, come watch this fight tonight because the beating I give this fighter, I'm going to give you a better beating. Él, él puede correr, pero no se puede salir del ring. You could run, but you can't hide. Y donde se para a pelear con Roberto Durán, se va a caer. And whenever you stop and fight me, I'm going to knock you out. Well, I'll take the shot. He's probably not going anyway, so... I figure he's on his way out. He's still tough and rough and rugged. Still got to punch his chance. But with the 10 years I got in front of him, I had in front of him, my scale of speed, Ring Savage, I could be able to outbox him, outpunch him, outslug him, and I'll run him. So I'll take the challenge. What's your analysis of uh, how he looks the first three rounds? He's looking pretty good. No, he looks like he's getting a good, good day of work. Yeah. No, he could use the work, but uh, 
He's nothing up to the ran when I used to look at him when I was a kid. But still, he's rugged, a hard puncher. You know, he'll wear you out. You know, if you come to talk about it, you know, I'm, I'm a welterweight. He's a super middleweight. He's, so, a, you know. he's at 168 and a quarter, all the way 147. But we've seen you basically in the uh, low to mid 150s. Uh, what, what's going to be the compromise weight? Well, I think I want to bring him back to about 57, 58. And if he don't, keeps don't talking. Don't think so. Well, I don't think you'll get him there. I think, you know, if this is his last for right here, he can't make the kind of money. He can't get no kind of excitement nowhere else anyway. So it's up to him, you know. But then again, the way I, I'm looking at him, I think I might give him a chance to for 160. Uh, can, can Durant get down to 160 at this point? He hits 44. Point, wow. What, he's 68 and a half tonight? Can he still get down that low? Well, he, had, he, had, he had some difficulty getting yeah, to 160 in the quarter. Well, he's going to want to talk about fighting the macho. Man. Yeah. You know, he, when, he was, when he was saying in there, tells me that he wants to control you by your emotions. What, what does it say to you when he's telling you the things like he said in that, in that bite? You know, if I look at the Rand here, you know, easily I can see how cool. I'll box him, you know. I'll spin him. I'll, I'll hold him. I'll smog him. But he's hoping you out fight him. Well, you know, I go out punch him. You know, I mean, let's go to two punches to my five six, you know. But that, that don't let you know, you just gotta make the fight and make it happen. The hands of stone, I, no question a legend in boxing. What should he be doing to a fighter like Ray Demange? Just about what he's doing now. You know, he's working home. I'm talking about I'm talking about the hands of stone. Hands of stone should be knocking him out. Sure. Hands of stone should be knocking him out. How much has he degraded? So, you know, he can get it, say about, let's say about 30%. Is he still a threat? Yeah, he's sure so. Why, experience? Experience, you know, the man savage that he has. He's rugged. He can take a good punch. You know, the round is pretty much there. He's pretty much there. You know, if he were to punish himself, I'm sure he could make one for the eight. Maybe that for you. All right, 10 seconds to go in round number four. We're talking with Hector Camacho. Stay with us for the next round. And right now, we'll pause for a word from your local cable systems. 6060. Six, Roberto Duran in the white trunks. Ray DeMond with a fight of his life coming out of... Step in against the legendary figure in the history of boxing, Roberto Duran. Roberto putting some combinations together, showing some hand speed. And now on his toes is the crowd. The crowd is chanting for Duran. Al Albert along with Sean O'Grady. We're joined by Hector Macho Camacho here at ringside, uh, scouting Roberto Duran, a man he has seen. Uh, Many, many times, but right now with special interest because there is uh, the talk of Camacho meeting Duran in May. And I know you guys are going to talk about it or perhaps even seal the deal after the fight tonight. More or less, yeah. You know, right now we're talking about the weight. You know, weight is a factor at the moment. Uh, but like everything I see, you know, I can see, I go, hey, if Benny finds the ends of beat on twice, I mean, hey, I love the fight. You know, there's legitimate bad blood between Duran and Pazienza. Uh, what's the relationship between Roberto and uh, the Macho? Well, nothing. I mean, you know, we got mutual respect for each other. But nevertheless, you know, I mean, he wants a big payday, and it's not, it's not anything egotistical about, you know, me and him. It's the point that he knows this is his last hurrah, and he would like to go with a bang. And he would love to have a win over Hector Camacho. Will this be a fight that it will be hard for you to get up for? I mean, the man is 44 years old. Hey, Why? No, no way, man. Hey, I used to see this cat, man, when I was about 12 years old on TV. Okay, the cat I used to fire. And now at this point, I see the cat that he's going to go, 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 go out there and try to take what I have so he could go on and make a payday on me and maybe one out. Both of them trade left hooks. Is it difficult fighting? You think it's difficult fighting one of your, your he was one of your heroes. Difficult fighting a hero? No, no, not when the hero's gonna try to take my head out of place, you know. It's the only sport you can meet your hero yeah. and hit him in the face. Yeah, I think, I think the round make me look great. You know, I, I could get all my jabs, my combination, my leg movements, you know. 
And you know, it's a big name to beat, you know? Oh, heavy right hand. You know, there are many who feel he shouldn't be uh, fighting. Uh, do you have any objections seeing that Roberto Duran still in the ring at this Duran, point? Duran is performing well. He's fighting well. He's showing, you know, that savage. You know, he's fighting. You know, it's the same thing uh, Foreman is doing. You know, they're going out there and they're fighting. You're now, what, 33? I'm 33, right here. What will you be doing at the age of 44? Uh, I love picking that for <laughs> Not still in the ring. Hope not. Well, Hector, do you remember this night back in Las Vegas? Greg Haugen uh, decisioned you to win the WBO Junior Wellaway title. That was your first loss. Yes, yes. And it was because you refused to touch his glove in the 12th round, and you lost by one point. That was that was a uh, different Hector Camacho. Yeah, but I think that was a disgrace. I thought even with the one point, I wasn't supposed to lose that fight at all. No way. I knocked him down in the fourth round. I was out pointing home. Uh, I think it was something to do with the uh, promotion or something, you know. I got a bad shake on that fight. But that's also an example of uh, the change that has uh, overcome the yeah. life of Hector Camacho. It's something hey. that you, you would have not lost that point well, tonight. Well, you know, I'm marrying that man now. I'm cool. I'm behaving, you know. I'm not a disco cat no more. Although you're blowing out our cameras with that sports coat. <laughs> yeah. We're going to have to have new cameras next week. Hector Camacho joining us here at uh, ringside as we watch Roberto Duran in his 108th professional fight. He is four victories away from a golden mark of 100 victories. And uh, with Ray Demange here tonight, Duran trying to wear him down and then look ahead for a fight against Hector Camacho. Well, I, think he, I think he's certainly wearing Demond's down, but you got to give Demond credit. He's in there fighting. He's taking some good shots. He's given some good shots. Although Demond is not known as a knockout artist. Over 11 KOs out of his 19 wins. There's his best punches, the left hook. He's scrapping. Yep. He's taken a couple of fights uh, going overseas. Looking pretty good, although in defeat. Uh, he fought Antoine Fernandez in France, who was 43 and 2. Demange broke his, his hand in the third round, went on to finish the fight, losing an eight-round distance fight. Fought tough for Henry Wharton. You remember Wharton's fight against Sir Nigel Benn. He was 15 and 0 at that time. And, and also 19 and 2, Ray Close in Ireland, the Wharton fight uh, in, in England. Demange just stopped in uh, both of those. Yeah, a couple of fights on short notice. He, at the Wharton fight, he went in and tried to KO him and just ran out of gas. And in the close fight, it wasn't close at all. He said, I, no shape. But he has uh, been in the ring against some world-class performers. The eye of Demange, the left eye, as you can see, starting to close. And we'll be looking closely at that. Duran, who feels he won the first fight against Vinny Pazienza. It's uh, Paz down in the fight for the first time in Vinny's career. Uh, Paz's face bloody. Duran was unmarked in the fight. But you recall the last half of that fight, the hands of Stone looked more like the legs of Stone, which also was the situation in, in basically the entire second fight. Roberto really looked old in that one. Yeah, really faded between the fights. Hector Camacho, what are you looking for now as you watch Roberto Duran? Well, I'm looking for Victor over okay. home. Now, as, as you see him here, 15 seconds to go. What are some of the things you notice in a couple of... I, I see him at all, man. <laughs> that, that, you, could, you could go that's home. Old plug. Yeah. <laughs> he's you know. Hector has seen him up. I seen him up, you know. All right, no we'll be back with the next move. round. I don't need some fancy cologne to tell me I'm a man. It's Saturday night at 9.30. If you haven't been watching USA Live, then you've missed. smart enough to play in comedy like that. Do it my way. Cranky. Man's just cranky. USA Live with the People's Court, tomorrow at 1.
packed house at the Mahi Shrine Auditorium in Miami. Big following for Roberto Duran, who uh, now lives here in Miami. Proving that he can still pack them in. You know, every fighter wants to face one, one that they can make a lot of money on. And if you have a fighter like Duran, who has a name, and can still pack him into an arena, that's, that's very important for a young fighter who wants to make a name for himself or a fighter that wants to make a lot of money. And when all fighters want to make a lot of money. When Roberto Duran beat Sugar Ray Leonard, in June of 1980 to win the Welterweight title and to go to 73 and 1 and then stop in the rematch, the No Mas fight. He then would go on and lose to Wilfredo, uh, Wilfredo Benitez, Kirkland Lang, and most figured that was the end of the line. Then he comes back three years later in 83 to beat Davey Moore for the junior middleweight crown then loses to Marvin Hagler, and then rocked by Tommy Hearns, a fight in which he was down three times. And once again, the opinion that that is the end of the line for Pazienza. Six years later, I, I rather for uh, Roberto Duran, six years later, he beats Iran Barkley at the age of 37 to win the middleweight titles, the four titles for Roberto Duran. It really like a cat, he's had nine lives. Certainly seems so. Yep. After he beat Barkley, he then lost to uh, Ray Leonard, then he lost to Pat Waller. Oh, yeah. fight that he actually uh, injured his shoulder during the fight. But after Leonard lost, he was out two years. After he lost to Waller, he was out another year and a half and uh, seemed to be forgotten. But then embarked on uh, this latest comeback. He started at 92. And he's been able to put together a couple of big paydays with Pazienza. That uh, one more with Camacho, not uh, not title fights, but uh, some money. And uh, I think when it's all said and done, that is the reason at 44, Roberto Duran is still in the ring. Yeah, where do you go when you're one of the greatest fighters of all times? Where do you go to make a living after your career is over for the rest of your life? So many fighters have. There's a good right hand. From Duran, but Duran not able to put away the Rage of Men. 15 seconds to go on the seventh. Roberto knows where to go, but you're in that seat. Can't get you out of there. You'll have to wrestle me for it. Or maybe you gotta make my weight. You gotta make my weight first. Hi, who's this? Mel. What you thinking about, Mel? and the champ, Sean O'Grady, in Miami. It is round number eight. And uh, I would suspect, Sean, if Ray Demange had any notion of beating Roberto Duran, it was to make him fight, take him into the later round, and try to outpoint him. He said he didn't want to try to outslug Duran, and he is getting him at least into the later rounds. Yeah, not really a, a, a knockout puncher. His best opportunity tonight, he knew it was to build up a score, build up points. And his best opportunities would come late in the fight when Roberto Duran felt all of his 44 years old. Well, this has been a night of champions. Not only uh, Sean O'Grady, Hector Camacho joining us, and uh, now Vinny Pazienza sliding over here at the uh, ringside. And Vinny, uh, you were watching Roberto Duran and kind of uh, shaking your head. What did that mean? I don't know. You know, um, first of all, glad to be here with you guys. I want to say hello to everybody back home. Um, but, you know, I'm watching him, and, and I, I have to feel bad for him because, you know, now now that we're not fighting anymore, I like the guy. <laughs> uh, that, that is a way to settle your difference. <laughs> yeah. and, you know, Duran's all right now that it's all over. Round yeah. 25 will never happen. But, uh, you know, he's fighting this young kid. He should have knocked him out in the first and second round. And, I think, I think maybe the Duran of three or four years ago would have took him out one or two rounds. You know, he came in the ring, he's smiling at me, and, you know, the old Duran's not like that. You know, yeah, you he's never like, saw him. He's like a big, jolly guy now. He's just enjoying himself, but, you know, I hate to see this go are down you, like this. Are you actually saddened by seeing Roberto Duran still in the ring? Well, you know, I wish he'd um, knock this guy out and then call it quits, but he's having a good time. He likes what he's doing. 
and it's, you know, they're trying to make a match with this nut behind me, Hector Camacho. And if that had happened, oh man, I'll be nowhere in sight. But Hector wants to wear that jacket. I'll go blind, Roberto. <laughs> Inside a minute to go in round number eight. Do you see much of a difference in Duran here than the Duran you fought? Even the Duran that I fought was much a, a little sharp and nasty. A little quick, and his punches seem to be thrown with more intensity. He's just tossing them out there, a lot of them. Every once in a while, they'll throw a hard shot. But, you know, he gets by, he's very witty, and he's, 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 he's ring wise. You know, he's old, he throws down, he still can punch. But, not feel bad. I wish he'd knock this guy one or two rounds. No, I don't want to see the legend go down like this. Ray Demain showing you his whiskers. Hangs in there. Takes a shot on the side of the jaw. They're trying, to make, back. they're trying to make a fight with him and Hector Camacho. Camacho's worried about the weight. You know, we should let him fight whatever weight he wants to come in. Senator, your mouth has amazed this panel. First, you come out in favor of Long John Silver's crunchy battered dip fish. Oscar De La Hoya. To be a winner in the ring, I have to give more than just 100% and never quit. Speed stick works as hard as I do. Gives me 110% protection against odor with its long-lasting deodorant ingredients. Speed stick. It never quits. The 818th round in the career of Roberto Duran. Four-time champion. He has fought 21 world title fights, winning 16 of those. Six comebacks in his 29-year career. Going up against Ray Demange, we have Vinny Pazienza here at Ringside. And it's James Hill, the man with the left. And the crowd getting behind the legend, who fights on, approaching his 25th birthday in June. Some stunning shots. Real crisp punches from Duran. This is the experience talking. Berto, by the ninth round, you really see the light at the end of the tunnel. Tenth round, just over the horizon, trying to pour it on a bit. The hands of stone, going to Mon why he's nicknamed that. Yeah, look at, look at the gloves of, of Demond. When you get hit with a solid shot like Duran has hit Demond earlier in this round, it just takes all the steam out of your brain. It takes all the power, to you his will. It takes your energy. You can still punch, so... I, I wanted to find out in our first fight. Yeah, I think you did. Yeah. He showed me. That's right. That could still hit hard. And that's waved off the slip. And that has been a slippery corner. Arthur Allen found that out earlier in the night. If you're Durant's corner, what do you tell Durant? He's been in a hundred, over a hundred fights. You know, he's got guys up there. He can tell them what to do. How can they give him any instructions? Where does Duran give you the most trouble in the two fights? He's very ring-wise. And it seems like he has one, a, a, a tad of a step more than he has now. And he was punching a little harder in the first fight. I think in the second fight, I took it out of him right off the bat with a left hook right in the, in the first round. And it slowed him the rest of the fight. You know, and, and this is reminded me of the ending of, of my second fight. Yeah, but he even in your fight, he kept trying, he kept coming back, and you'd have to fight him off. Oh, yeah, well, we didn't like each other at the time. Now we like each other, we're not fighting each other. You know, he's hitting Ray Demarge like he doesn't like him right now. He's trying to, you know, he don't want this fight to go out. He didn't want it to go this way. When, when you say you like each other, are you also speaking for him? I think so. I think now holding on.
Bruce Strauss giving instructions to Zaman. Here it is, correct. The overhand right. Duran shifted his weight to the right foot, landed all that weight right on the point of Zaman's chin. Zaman went right to the ropes. Roberto Duran. Again, what do you tell us? Final round. Go out there and do what you did in the nightclub. Yeah, let's keep doing it. Vinny Pazienza, his last fight in June against Roy Jones. Uh, you've been off for about eight months. At that time, a question of whether you would continue on or not. To, what, what's next for you? For you? Oh, I was more disgusted in that fight than her. You know, I mean, I, I just had a bad night. Jones had a great night. I fought the best fighter in the world, and, and I felt terrible. When I walked to the ring, I knew it was going to be a problem, and I hope Jones had a bad night, but he didn't. You know, or else that would have never happened. So where does that leave you now? Well, I want to come back with something big. I don't just want to come back with anything. My, my life story, the movie's being, being in the process of being made now. We're going to start filming at the end of the year. Heart and soul, I think Christian Slater is going to play my part. Danny Aiello hopefully will play my dad. It'll be a great story, and I want to come back with something big. Either a Nigel Ben, a Steve Collins, or a young undefeated kid from Boston, because I want to fight in Boston. Dana Rosenblatt, uh, she's acting like a little bit of a pussy now, but I think I'll be able to get him sooner or later. Um, I want to come back with something big. That's all. It's as simple as so, that. So in other words, they haven't written the conclusion of the movie yet. Well, the conclusion will end after the first fight. Did you write Al and I in that movie? You guys are going to play your own part. Oh, great. Well, we're, I don't know. That might be a stretch for both of us. You are definitely going to play your own part. It'll end at the Santana fight. All right, so who plays Roberto Duran? Nobody. Nobody can play Roberto. Duran playing to the crowd, wanting that knockout. He's got much of the crowd here on their feet. Well, the crowd here thrilled that Roberto Duran is still in the ring and fighting. And... You know what? I was going to think of it. I think if we put a Spanish accent on Daniel DeVito, he might be a good Roberto Duran. <laughs> oh, downstairs to the body. You, ju you just made up with Roberto, and now you messed it up. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding, Roberto. Let me tell you something. I'm outnumbered here. <laughs> There's a lot of Duran fans. And you can see the interest so that would be stirred up in a Duran Camacho fight. Sure. One yeah, of the venues that's is... That's control in boxing. When you can make people come to your fight, support you, pay their hard-earned dollars to watch you fight, that's money to these fighters. Yeah, that's a great Hispanic fight. I, I mean, Duran's going to have to take value in the press conference with Camacho, but it might be a good fight. Stepped on the toe of Demise. Demise stumbles. This kid's hung in there now. I hate to see it. Anthony knocked out. He can say he went 10 rounds with the break of Burger Brown. One of his last fights. Final 20 seconds. Durant still digging the body. And Durant puts in a, a night of 10 rounds. But he fought back. And that is it. Roberto Duran. On his way to victory number 97. Ray Demange goes the distance. And we will have the decision shortly. Thank Vinny Pazienza for joining us. It's now time for our Budweiser Power Punch, brought to you by Budweiser, fresh for natural, proud to be your bud. And it was not supplied by Roberto Duran, but by his cousin in a sensational performance, Santiago Samaniego, who took out 19-1 Arthur Allen with three knockdowns in the second round after an all-out assault in the first Samaniego. A name you will be hearing from went to 22 and 1. He's just 22 years old and provided tonight's Budweiser Power Punch. Okay. The milling around in the ring on a night of quite a bit of action here on the Tuesday night fights capped off by 10 rounds by Roberto Duran in his 108th 
professional fight. And we have the decision. Here is Mark Fiedel. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a unanimous decision. Judge Robert Ballos scores it 99-92. Judges Paul Herman and Rocky Young score it 99-91. All to the winner by unanimous decision. Manos de Piedra, Roberto Duran. Duran. Roberto Duran works for 10 rounds, a kiss for his uh, young son. And now it's time to talk with Hector Camacho and try to line up uh, another big payday for the four-time former champion for some time in May. Continuing the career, he'll be 45 in June. And that's it for tonight's Tuesday Night Fights. Tonight's boxing has been brought to you by...